In this video, we're gonna get you in a spin. It's time to make spinning tops and fidget spinners in Onshape. We're gonna continue our beginner series by creating some real world objects, spinning tops and fidget spinners. Both of these use very similar techniques when we sketch, the main one being rotational patterns. Let's begin. We're gonna start by making the spinning top. So we're gonna do a sketch on the top plane, spin around our camera, and then use our P shortcut to hide the planes. The overall shape is gonna be a circle. We're gonna need two of them to begin. So let's draw a small one, and then somewhere else, let's draw a big one. We're gonna use a new constraint, which is the concentric constraint. When we do this to two circles, it gives them the same center point, locking them together like a bullseye. There's only two dimensions that we need to input here. The first is for the hole in the middle. We're designing this so it's just a flat disc and an ordinary lead pencil can slot into the middle and create the vertical portion. Eight millimeters is perfect for this. Now on the outside, we're gonna aim for about 75 millimeters. Now we use the straight line tool and the three point arc tool to create some geometry. I can now use the line tool and the three point arc tool to draw my geometry. I only need to draw it once. I'm now gonna use the tangent constraint to tidy it up. One constraint that we haven't tried yet is called the normal constraint. It's the opposite of a tangent. So instead of this one coming out smoothly, we're gonna tell it we want it to come out at exactly 90 degrees. A little bit of dragging to get things back into place. In the middle of the top toolbar, we have a tool called Linear Pattern. If we hit the little arrow next to this, we'll get a drop down and we wanna select Circular Pattern. Now we click on all the geometry that we'd like to rotate. If we zoom out, we can see that the center point by default is set to the origin. So we're gonna click and drag that to the middle of our spinning top. Up here it says three times, which means there's three copies in total. We can change this number. Odd numbers generally look the best. We can see that five is too many, so we might try four. Excellent. It's prompting us to left click to save. After we've done a circular pattern, you'll find that we can still move this geometry, and when we move one, all of them will update. We're ready to extrude. Let's close the sketch, click on extrude, and then click in the middle. 25 mils is too thick. This one I think I'd like to see and see machine out of three mil acrylic. So I'll set it to three mils. I'm gonna right click and rename part one to be spinning top. I'm now gonna do something new, which is to right click and go to edit appearance. We're gonna come down to the letter A, which stands for alpha. In graphic design programs, that means transparency. I'm gonna put it down, change the color to gray, and now I have the appearance of smoky acrylic. Time to create the fidget spinner. I'm gonna start a new sketch, once again on the top plane. Get the camera where I want it, pan over, and start drawing some circles. Once again, we're gonna have one in the center where the main bearing goes, and then a second one around the outside for the outside of the spinner. The cheapest bearings on eBay are from skateboards and they are 22 millimeters in diameter. So we're gonna set our center to that. A nice size on the outside is about 80 or 90 millimeters. Any bigger and it's gonna hit the webbing between your finger and your thumb as it spins. I'm gonna set mine to 80. If you want your fidget spinner to work well, you're gonna need other holes here to insert extra bearings so it can get some nice momentum. Once again, we're gonna draw a circle where we want the bearing to be. I'm gonna hover over the origin and then use the dotted guideline to come directly above and now draw my other hole. The equals constraint will do a great job at getting them the same quickly. Once again, simple geometry will do a great job. Straight lines and arcs all the way. Let's see if we can clean this up with some tangent constraints. And finally a vertical. We're ready to rotate again. Let's click the button 
and then click on all the geometry we want to rotate around. Don't forget your circle for the extra bearings. Zoom out, move the center point to the middle of the fidget spinner and left click if you're happy. I'm now going to use the trim tool to tidy up the outside edge. The sketch is finished, let's hit the tick and now extrude. A good thickness to match one of these bearings is 8mm. You can generate lots of ideas very quickly with this method. Two real world objects finished and ready to make. Stay tuned for a future video where we explore 3D printing and CNC machining to make these for real. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.